Okay, in this video, I'm just gonna run through the front suspension on the Automatics A12. Uh, I'll try and explain a few of the options that are available available to you for setup, um, and also how to build uh, the steering block and kingpin, because uh, it's a fairly critical part of the car to get right in order to get the most out of it. Um, so I'll just run through that and explain how the guys uh, running this car in the UK uh, have been building their front end so far. So if we uh, look at the design of the car in a bit of detail, um, you can see that the front suspension and the servo and everything on the front end is all built onto a carbon plate. Um, and this is quite a neat modular design that just bolts onto the front of the chassis here. So um, basically our whole front end can be built off the car independently um, and then bolted on later just with these four screws and then obviously the forward pivot screw underneath. Uh, so that's a really uh, neat design that allows you to make quick changes um, if you want to back to back test uh, different builds of front ends. You don't have to dismantle the entire car um, in order to change the wheelbase or the steering blocks you're running or anything like that. You can uh, just build another front end. Uh, and bolt it on at your at your leisure um, and in fact that is uh, what I've been doing with the car so um, I've been kind of changing and playing around with uh, trailing axles axles and inline axles so I've got two front ends built for the car uh, one has as is on the car at the moment trailing axles and the other one has inline um, and I've built these two front ends with carbon plates appropriate to the axles that I'm running to basically give me the same wheelbase on the car when I change between the axle styles. Um, obviously it's good when you're making setup changes to just change one thing at a time so I decided that I wanted to keep the wheelbase consistent and just have the option to, to change between the two axle types. Um, in terms of the plates that are available, um, the early release uh, kits came with what we call the zero front suspension plate. So that was the originally designed uh, wheelbase for the car. Um, there's also a minus 1.5 uh, front suspension plate, which uh, any of you that have uh, bought your kits uh, more recently, certainly a kit you can, you can buy today will come with a minus 1.5 plate. So that just shortens the wheelbase of the car by one and a half millimeters. Um, in addition to that, there's also uh, the ZT uh, front plate, um, could also be referred to as a minus three because uh, that was originally designed with zero trail axles in mind. So it basically shortened the wheelbase by three millimeters um, to account for three millimeters of wheelbase increase you get if you fit inline axles to the car. Um, Beyond that, there's also a minus six plate, um, and that is really designed exclusively for the use of inline axles. Um, I think uh, running the minus six plate with trailing would make the car incredibly short. That's possibly something you might wanna try if you're running on a really small, twisty technical track, but uh, for the most part, I think um, if you're fitting the minus six plate, you wanna be doing that with, with inline axles. Um, if we take a closer look at the corner of the car, um, you can see here that we've got the caster post that bolts into the lower arm. You can see that just there. Um, so the posts that come as standard in the kit give uh, four degrees of caster. Um, and then the camber adjustment is indexed with these holes that run around the edge of the the uh, lower mounting boss on the caster post. Um, so you've, there are options of caster posts, so you can have four, five or six degree posts. Um, like I say, the kit standard is four degrees. And then on each of those posts, you've got indexed camber adjustment starting at minus 0.75 uh, degrees. And it goes in steps of uh, 0.25 all the way up to, I think 1.75 degrees of negative camber. Um, generally, uh, UK tracks we found uh, you don't really want to be running much camber on the car at all so um, a standard perhaps set it to minus 0.75 um, there may be instances where you'd like to run less 
than 0.75 uh, a degree of negative camber. You can achieve less than 0.75 on the car. Um, it just needs a little bit of kind of an intuitive thought. You can just rotate the post ever such a slight amount more than the 0.75 setting to get to half a degree. Um, but be, be very careful when you're doing that because it's not an indexed adjustment. Um, so it's probably recommended to check what you've uh, set on the car is correct using a camber gauge. Um, so once we've selected our caster post, set the amount of camber we want to run, um, it's time to build up the rest of the corner. So uh, the way we do that is to start with a steering block like this one. So uh, the kit is supplied with trailing steering blocks. As I previously mentioned, you can get uh, inline or zero trail blocks as well. Um, and as standard, uh, these have a, a set height between their, their faces. There are also more recently uh, some dash S steering blocks available. Um, they are 1.5 millimeters shorter um, from face to face, so between these collars. Uh, they are a mil and a half shorter. So you, if you're running the dash S blocks, you just need to account for that in the way you shim the kingpin uh, in order to achieve the correct preload on the spring and give you the right uh, droop uh, measurement on the car. The, the dash S blocks really were designed for uh, predominantly the US market where they're running on different carpet types to what we have in Europe. Um, and they like to run very, very small tire sizes uh, in the US. So having a shorter block just gives you a bit more adjustment range uh, for ride height on the kingpin. Um, but that's, that's not to say that you can't use them uh, on European tracks. Um, like I say, it's just an adjustment range thing. So uh, this is a standard height block. Um, and there's another video that I produced to uh, show you how we build these with uh, grease inside them for damper and how we tighten these collars. Um, so check that out um, in order to get to a steering block build uh, like I've got in my hand here. So the first thing to do uh, when we've got our block with a sleeve through it like this um, is to push the sleeve out the bottom of the block like you see there um, and then take some shims. So these shims are supplied in the kit, they're 0.2 of a mil thick each. Uh, and I've got five shims in my hand here and I'm just gonna slide those over the sleeve here. So this is on the, the bottom of the block. You can see the track rod ball stud uh, is just above here. So these go onto the bottom of the sleeve underneath the steering block. Uh, and when you've got it like that, you can then assemble it onto the kingpin itself. Um, it's probably easiest to, to do this installation with the car on its side, like I've got here. The reason being is you need to, when you push the sleeve over the post like this, you need to make sure the sleeve goes all the way home to the bottom of the caster post. Um, what you don't want to do is risk any of the, the shims on the, on the sleeve getting caught underneath the sleeve, between the sleeve and the bottom of the post, because that will adjust or that will affect um, how, the, how the sleeve is slid onto the post and also the, the ride height of the car and your droop setting and everything else. So really make sure that this sleeve is pushed all the way to the bottom uh, without any shims nearby. And then once you've done that, you can push the block and the shims all the way to the bottom like that. Um, a quick check to make sure that this is built properly um, is just to Look at the top of the kingpin here, you'll see that the sleeve and the kingpin uh, faces sit flush on the top. So if you if you build this uh, to this level and then find that there's a step on the inside of this uh, sleeve here down to the black caster post, and then it just means that the sleeve isn't all the way home on the bottom of the post and there's probably a shim caught underneath. So just, just check that, um, it's fairly important. Um, I have seen a few few of these built um, where the shims have got caught and it just means that the car feels like it's tweaked when you drive it, so do watch out for that. Once we've got that on, um, I'm going to put one further shim on the top here. So that gives us a total of six shims on the build. Then on goes the spring, 
uh, we find in the UK or have found that a fairly good base setup is to use the C1.1 uh, springs are a bit softer than kit. Uh, we have experimented with slightly stiffer and slightly softer ones, but C1.1 seem to be a pretty good base setting for our carpet and tracks. And then what we are also doing is uh, adding a one millimeter shim to the top of the caster post. Um, so this is a three by five by one millimeter ball stud uh, washer. So that just goes inside the spring, but sits on top of the post like that. What that's effectively doing is lengthening the kingpin by a millimeter. Um, so when you're running the standard height hubs, it just gives you a bit more ride height and droop adjustment uh, range. And it just makes things a bit easier, particularly if you're wanting to run tires that are a bit on the larger side. Uh, so with this setup, you can run a front tire that's up to about 42 millimeters um, and still get down to about three and a half mil of, of ride height. So, so just to go through that again, we've got the post, five shims, steering block, one shim, then the spring. And there's a, a one millimeter spacer on top of the post here, but inside the spring itself. And then on the top goes uh, what is in the kit, um, a button head screw with a washer, but um, I found these neat little uh, screw and washer combined uh, little jobbies that are, I think they're made by RDRP, uh, designed originally for electric buggy uh, wings, but they are the perfect size just to replace that screw and washer uh, to go into the top of the kingpin here. So they thread in, let me just tighten that up all the way, like so. Lovely and smooth. Um, so with this build, um, as I mentioned, five shims, steering block, one shim, spring, one mil washer, and then screw on top. With a C1.1 mil, uh, C1.1 spring, this should give you between 0.2 and 0.3 millimeters of droop on the front end, which is a pretty good place to start. We think um, once you've built this and you've you've set it to give the amount of droop that you require or want to work, want to run. Um, there shouldn't be any reason after that to add or remove any shims from the front end unless you want to change the droop setting. So if you want to run less droop, just add shims, run more droop, take shims away. When you come to change ride height, uh, there's no reason to add or remove shims. You just move them from the bottom of the block to the top or vice versa, depending on which direction you want to adjust the ride height in. So for this setup, if I wanted to go uh, to a setup where I've got more ride height than I have here, I would take shims away from the bottom of the block and simply add them to the top. So the, the total shim count shouldn't need to change. Uh, 